Hi everyone, here's the Bookemist once again, and today I'm reviewing very briefly Coming From Behind, a novel I am positive some of you will absolutely adore, and the right type of reader will not forget very easily. I recently reviewed Kaluki Nights by Jacobson, my first Jacobson novel, and Kaluki Nights, I understand, is among it's considered among uh, Jacobson's major works or most successful popular novels, whereas Coming From Behind is more of a minor work. I think it was first uh, published novel and it's clearly inspired if my understanding is correct, at least marginally, marginally, by his own experiences teaching English. I never usually mention author biographies in my reviews. I genuinely believe that they're quite irrelevant to the reading act. If I'm mentioning this now, it's because I do believe that the target audience for coming from behind, the people who will be able to appreciate it the most, are English literature teachers. I think lots of the reflections in the book will resonate with people who studied English, who uh, did a degree in English literature, but if you taught English literature, especially in the United Kingdom, you're going to have a blast with coming from behind. The main character is this scholar with delusions of grandeur, who dreams of moving to the south of England and teaching, maybe in a prestigious, but at least in a quaint and tasteful institution, and who instead is confined to a polytechnic in the Midlands, in a department that was originally called English Literature, but has now, after a few transitions, has now become the Department of 20th Century Studies, and will soon be evicted from its uh, place on campus, campus being uh, this space just beside the ring road where English literature is taught to a new location that is pretty surprising that you'll have to find out by reading the book yourself. There are some hilarious discussions in here about the way teaching has evolved in the last few decades in the UK, and surprisingly and shockingly this book came out in 83. The reflections in here are quite old by now, but they're still so very relevant. This idea that universities do not expect students to strive to be accepted into them anymore, but if anything are doing whatever in, whatever's in their power to get more students, because in the new economic system in which universities have to operate, students are their customers, basically, they're their main source of income. This idea is explored very interestingly, and the consequences of this very functional, very pragmatic approach, the obvious dreadful consequences of it, are explored in the novel. At times this feels very much like a J.G. Ballard novel, because of the dystopian picture it it, it, it depicts, and, and still all of this is, is happening, it's been happening for a while, which is not to say at all that the book is a love letter to the old system. If anything, the injustices of that one too are pointed out pretty clearly. Uh, in the book. I think this is more of a, of a bitter, a, a, a humorous book about the state of teaching and the state of academia in the UK and I think in the Western world, more broadly speaking. In, it's absolutely hilarious, although the humor is definitely arch and definitely sour. It's by no means a politically correct novel. I believe when approaching this book, you should use the same attitude I usually have with certain Philip Roth books. And I know Jacobson and Roth are compared often, I mentioned this in the past, it's, well, maybe the, obviously the comparison has some, some uh, value to it if I'm here making it. My point being, I don't think it's too constructive to get indignant because of the non-PC views expressed by many of the characters in this book. If anything, I think they are interesting case studies that allow us to understand why this non-politically correct views are harbored and developed, and I think the book is as critical of these characters as it is of certain professors it makes fun of. A good example would be the protagonist's attitude toward the working class people in the Midlands town where he lives and teaches, and this protagonist dislikes, the, he has this profound distaste for their idiosyncrasies and their habits and even their ways of speaking, and clearly the book is not criticizing working class people, but through the perspective of, it, of its protagonist, through the perspective of this rather obtuse man on, on certain fronts, it's still able to provide some interesting social commentary. Not too long ago I reviewed Nin by Vladimir Nabokov, and I commented on the fact that that's one of the most hilarious campus novels I've ever read. And I think Coming From Behind is 
equally hilarious if you're familiar with the system it's describing. I don't think uh, it's as sublime as Nin. I'm, I'm not comparing them. Nin is an obvious masterpiece of uh, world literature, and I don't think coming from behind itself uh, like wants to be as ambitious as Nin even is. But it is as uh, definitely as much fun. And if you enjoyed the uh, Nin's campus elements and the way Nin pokes fun uh, at the way universities works, at the relationship between colleagues, at the relationship between uh, academians and students, you are going to have a great time with coming from behind. One page that I found too hilarious not to share with you and that will give you a good sense of just how fun the book is. Sefton Goldberg, the protagonist, is reflecting on the lectures given by a colleague called Art who tends to see symbols everywhere and I think this is something this discussion on symbols will will resonate with all of us who study and teach and read and, 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 and enjoy literature. Arthur Twinbarrow could find a symbol anywhere. Not a flower grew but it was symbolic of regeneration. Not a leaf fell but it was symbolic of spiritual desolation. Not a ball bounced but it was symbolic of the irrepressibility of the human spirit. Nothing was ever the thing it was and everything was always something else. Symbols drove Sefton to destruction. To him they were like fleas in the double bed of literature. He was aware that they might be in there somewhere but he could never find them himself. And even when he was determined to pass an undisturbed night, he was pestered by the scratchings of somebody else. He waged a bitter war against Arthur's influence, telling his students that they had better not go on a symbol hunt when he was around, but he knew that they went charging after them the minute his back was turned. It irked him that although he was constantly demonstrating the wildness and folly of Arthur's ingenuity, the students still agreed with Arthur. He didn't like to hear himself either, raising his voice to some quiet but obdurate pupil who wouldn't see that he was right. It seemed to him that there was something a trifle defeated about having to bang the desk and ball. Why can't it just be a fucking albatross, you burk? And as the passage showcase, the book is quite virtuosistically written and it's a pleasure to experience even just to appreciate Howard's use of language and the way his arch jokes are packed into these convoluted but very effective, these effervescent sentences. I know the target audience, as I called it, of this book might be quite limited in my viewership, in people who are going to watch this video, but if you have ever taught in an English literature department in the UK, you must read Coming From Behind. If you are, um, uh, if you've been a student of literature, if you are a scholar of literature, I think you can still appreciate this book just as much as if you are a fan of campus novels of that bizarre subgenre. By all means, I think you should check it out. What did you think of Coming From Behind if you've read it? Are you Jacobson fans? If so, what other books of his should I check out next? I think The Mighty Walls will probably be my uh, next novel of his that I read, although it, it, will, it will be a while before I, I get to that one. And I look forward to discussing the book with you guys in the comment section as always. Thank you for watching the review and bye guys. Mm -hmm.